You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. It's Monday, June 13th, a day that will forever live in infamy until the next day, that is. And, well, we've got our good friend, Craig Hempke, tfmetalsreport.com. And we're here reporting on the carnage, whether you own cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrencies, whether you're from the crypt, gold, everything is getting sold today. And, uh, hey, Craig, what's your take? Uh, you got it. You nailed it right there, my old friend. Um, you know, it, it's funny. I, I was about this time last week, I was looking at buying some um, puts on the S&P. And I, and I actually did it on consecutive days, Monday and Tuesday. And I thought, oh, you know what? I am so sick of losing money and freaking options. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's usually a good sign, right? You know, I give you a tell a telltale sign that this was coming. Um, yeah, we couldn't have predicted, you know, CPI and all that kind of stuff. But what day was it last week, Monday or Tuesday, when the news hit with about an hour to go about Biden spending $4.3 billion on uranium stuff? Mm-hmm. Right, this is a fundamentally, extraordinarily sound good news for the whole sector. And they all popped. Uh, everything, I mean, everything went up 10, 15% that afternoon. Then the next morning, I remember right on my site, well, this might be a good sign because they didn't go straight back down. That lasted like a half hour. <laughs> and then they all went straight back down, which told me it doesn't matter how good the news is. Right now, if it's got a bid that I can sell into, I'm selling. And that's now what has happened. And this is this is a real disaster in the making. I don't say that, you know, well, full of hyperbole. I sure hope I'm not that after 12 years. Uh, the bond market is selling off almost uncontrollably at this point with the, with, as we speak, the two year notes up at like three and a quarter percent. There were some, uh, uh, I saw things Saturday morning on Twitter. Some guy has been a mortgage broker his whole life. So there's only been five days that he'll never forget. And Friday was one of them when the mortgage backed securities market went no bid. Well, hell what's it like today? Right. Um, stocks, uh, the Japanese yen is absolutely imploding because their central bankers are trying to defend their yield curve control policy. How are they doing that? They're selling treasuries and taking the dollars and buying yen. They sold 60 or $70 billion worth of treasuries last month. So you got all this new funding and refunding and everything else, a treasury supply. You've got traditional buyers like the Japanese saying, oh, no, we're not buying, we're actually selling. And then you got the Fed allegedly saying there's some, there's no buyers. So when we talk about, well, the 10-year note, probably not going to, hell, it could go to 4%, it go to 5 And uh, God knows what that would do to the stock. The last time the 10-year note got this high, the stock market fell 20% in the fourth quarter of 18. Um, it's got a ways to go still. And the folly of it all, Kerry, is the faith that people put in these uh, so-called masters of the universe central bankers. Um, they, can no long, they can no more control events than you and I can. But yet they think they can, and that's what makes it all kind of scary. You know what this reminds me of? You know that game that you see in bars? It's like a stack, square stack of like wooden Jenga. And you put, what is that called? Jenga. Jenga. So this is a giant Jenga. They pull one piece out and they put it on top. The thing, yeah. Pulling and pulling. And every now and then that thing falls down, like in 08 and 09. Right. uh, March of 2020. And now, unfortunately, not only are they moving pieces, but the thing is on fire. Right. And right. they're right. still trying to maneuver the pieces to make the thing not fall down. And it's like <laughs> daylight savings time, you know? Daylight savings time. The Indian chief once said, leave it to the white man who thinks that he can cut off a piece of a blanket and sew it onto the top and have a bigger blanket. <laughs> <laughs> That's our Federal Reserve, you know? This is, the, this is the madness that we're going through. I got a question for you, though. All right, so last time we had 08 and 09, we got Bernie Madoff, we had hedge funds blowing up. What entities do you think are gonna blow up now besides uh, crypto exchanges with non-existent uh, yeah. coins and stable coins and Tether? There's gonna be multiple blowups here. And then there's going to be a Bernie Madoff who surfaces, who gets blamed for everything. 
Well, um, here, here's the problem uh, in a nutshell, I suppose. Everybody remembers the dot-com bubble, right? <clears throat> How carried away that got, and that led to a recession and, and everything else. And the Fed, rather than paying the piper, you know, and, you know and, and, and politicians trying to spend less and austerity and everything else, they blew up the housing market, right? There's a huge housing bubble. Now, as that rippled through all the mortgage-backed securities and credit default swaps and all that other crap, you know, it was kind of limited to Wall Street, and then it all kind of trickled down, right? Mm -hmm. So... I'm sure you and everybody listening to us has now heard, you know, after that, would they blow up the everything bubble, right? You've heard that term before? Yes. So where it was just the dot-com sector that blew up and that rippled out or the housing sector that blew up and that rippled out, what's blowing up now is everything. Mm -hmm. There is nothing working. I guess you could say the energy company, if we all bought Exxon Mobil six months ago, that'd probably have been okay. But yeah. there's nothing, even, even the solid commodity trades are getting sold. You know, they're, everything's financialized with futures contracts and everything. everything that has a bid gets sold. That's why gold gets dumped on a day like this. One, you got nominal interest rates going higher, but it's got a bid. And God, God forbid you actually have a profit in something. You're going to dump that first so that then you can cover your margin calls that are being generated elsewhere. But every, there's, there's no safe haven in bonds. There's no safe haven anywhere in stocks. There's no safe haven in crypto everything is falling. And that's where this, this folly of the central bankers that think, oh no, we got it under control. Nope. I saw a thing today, Kerry, some, uh, one of the Wall Street banks was saying the Fed's going to do 50 basis point rate hikes for the next five meetings in a row. And I laughed out loud. <laughs> uh, uh, otherwise on. known as LOL, right? Or LOL. I mean, are you LOL. kidding <laughs> um, You can't be serious. But, you know, here's, you know, I'll, I use this as an example occasionally, and it's, it's particularly valid now. When I first started in the securities business, almost, I think it was June the 10th of 1990 when I got my Series 7s license, Kerry. So, right. hey, yippee me, that's 32 years ago. Um, the only time you ever saw anyone from the Fed, it was Greenspan. And he, every six months, would do Humphrey Hawkins testimony on Congress. And, you know, they had the cameras there to see how fat his briefcase was, you know, and that, that was it. Once every six months. You didn't know who the head of the Cleveland Fed was, you know, or the San Francisco Fed. You didn't know any of those people. Now... Oh my God, you can't get an, if there's an open mic, they're going to grab it. And they've been conditioned by the media and the banks and everyone's got their beak in the trough that they are somehow the masters of the universe in total control. And they believe their press clippings. Why, look, why would you even want Powell's job? Right? Like, uh, why would you want Biden's job? Like, right. Their right mind wants to be president. Right. Why? Class. If I was Powell, I, I'd have said, you know, four years is good enough. I'll go give some speeches and work at Citadel. You guys just can take it from here. Why would he want it? Because he thinks he's smart enough to fix all this shit. Excuse me. <laughs> and he's full of it. He's abs. I mean, and so that arrogance is what is really going to be the downfall this time. And what we'll wait for is when the pain gets so great across everything and they realize they've overdone it. And now here come the floodgates again. And I, I think this will be the time. And this will be the time that nobody buys it. Right, everyone will go, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen this now a couple of times. You people are full of crap. All you can do is print, and then that's going to be. Our, I mean, that's going to be our time that's when the, everything finally business. really takes off. The for the metals. Hey, we talked about this months ago, Craig. That when they started making noises about raising rates and everything, they were going to have to pivot uh, yeah. because mm -hmm. the economy is so fundamentally weak. The global economic system is teetering, the supply chain, yep. all of this stuff, throw in a war, yes. and we've got an absolute recipe for unmitigated disaster. Yes. Here we are. Yes. Yes. And again, uh, they think that they can push things to the brink and then just change and then everything will change. And I suppose maybe the stock market will bounce back a little bit when that happens. I know the precious metals will. But the damage that's being done uh, just to, to people's wealth and to the economy does not just turn around, you know, it, like, you know, it's that notion of a battleship, you know, just turning on a dime and getting better just because you flip the switch from on to off or off to on. And, and again, this inflation monster, um, 
Uh, we've been talking about this for a long time. And, uh, you know, I remember writing about it in 2010 and 11, you know, when we initially started QE, this was going to be, oh my gosh, there's going to be hyperinflation. All this. It never happened because they mainly were flooding cash into the banks and taking crap off, you know, that was zero cents on the dollar and paying them a hundred cents on the dollar. And then and that cash never made it out. Right. This totally different story. And there are no going back. We're going to get the universal basic income. All that stuff's going to be needed going forward as the economy collapses and there are no jobs and everything else. The inflation is not, it's out and it is not going to, it's not going to stop. And that's something that is just going to wreck everything. I mean, that's like societal strife. Yes. You know, when people can't, you know, they're trying to make ends meet. I'll give you one last thing, Carrie. This, the worst thing, and again, this is not reported at all in the media coverage last Friday, the CPI. You know, it's all like, oh, CPI is up eight tenths, of, you know, whatever, 8% and everybody going crazy. Average. Inflation adjusted earnings fell seven tenths of 1% in a month. Now you might think, what's that? Isn't that 1% big deal? Yeah, but if that, as that continues, that's like eight or 9% a year annually that wages aren't keeping up with even that understated inflation. And you got, what is it, two thirds of a, a US adults don't even have enough money in the bank to cover one month of their expenses if they lose their job? Terrible. And this is, this is really bad stuff, Kerry. And I mean, we've talked about it for a decade, you know, everyone's we're like, boy, tumors. what did we know? We didn't know anything. Yeah, That's right. We're just, we're just out. pumpers. We're just pumpers. That's all. Right. <laughs> but, but, you know, the thing is, it, and the line has always been, you know, it's like, do you really want gold to be soaring because of all this stuff? And I'm like, no, no, I don't want that to happen. I, I, I don't want to see a, a societal collapse and, and people struggling and grapes of wrath kind of stuff. But what I know is it's most likely just an eventuality. So I might as well prepare for it. And here we are. Absolutely. Well, if you're a value stock investor, though, there's good news because uh, Tesla's P.E. ratio is only 88 and a half now. So it <laughs> might be time to load up on Tesla, right? Don't just survive. Thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Osino Resources is a Ross Beattie-backed gold exploration company in mining-friendly Namibia. Osino's district-scale land package is situated near two producing gold mines, one of which Osino's management team previously developed and sold to B2 Gold. Osino's founders and management are experienced mining professionals who have already successfully developed and sold two companies in the past seven years. Osino has a tight share structure, and with its current treasury, it can self-fund the advancement of its gold discovery into at least 2022. This is an exploration company with Drills turning that you'll definitely want to pay attention to. Osino trades in New York under the ticker OSIIF and in Toronto under the ticker OSI. To learn more, go to OsinoResources.com. That's OsinoResources.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. It's really coming down. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You know, and it's, and there, this is a type, if you, if you have the ability to raise cash or whatever, and, and, and this is not an original thought, this is all part of what's driving the selling. There's going to be a moment where there are things that are just extraordinarily inexpensive that are actual real businesses, right? That are going to continue to work and, and generate, you know, earnings and that kind of stuff. But there is this reset coming. It's like um, the, all, you know, you have Bitcoin. Bitcoin's great, right? The original you know, original Coke, man, it is awesome. And then you got all these spinoffs of Coke that all, you know, they kind of taste like it, but they taste like crap and I don't want to drink it. And you could get rid of all of them and I'll just stick with my Coke and my Diet Coke. This thing, the Bitcoin that has spun off all of these things that they call, well, can I say shit coin? Well, I guess yeah, I just did. Whatever. Hey, this all is right. a family publication, but they're, that's, they're, that's what they are. And if it takes getting rid of all of them, then it's worth it because there are, I mean, almost all of them are scams and Ponzi schemes. Bitcoin, I, I really don't think is, but I bet all those other deals like the Celsius that we heard about today or the Terra Luna thing from a couple of weeks ago, yeah. those have to go away. And so it's just a purging of speculative excess and that'll be fine when it happens. But boy, working through the process is what's utterly uncontrollable and utterly unpredictable. And everybody's sitting around thinking, yeah, but the Fed's got it. No, they don't. Yeah. Well, you know, they say that uh, Washington is where sausage gets made. 
Well, yeah. Wall yeah. Street is going to be the place where his sausage gets deconstructed here. <laughs> you know? I've, I used to use a uh, an image on my site, you know, a little picture with the post, you know. I have to break it back out of like the old fashioned meat grinder, like my mom had. We just put that, you'd grind the thing and. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's where we're going. We're all getting shoved into that grinder at this point. And um, I, again, I don't mean, I, I, I worry that people watch this think, oh, I bet these guys have been saying this for years, you know, and then, uh, you know, no, man, I look. I've been, now been saying this for about six months that this was going to happen, that the Fed was going to jawbone their way into scaring the bond market and rates were going to spike and it was going to drive a liquidity problem. The stock market was going to crash probably all the way down to the 200 week moving average on the S&P, which is at thirty five hundred. Uh, but even, you know, back in the pre covid days, it went about, I don't know, a couple hundred points below the 200 week moving average. So it's all been sitting there just waiting for you to see it. And now. It's happening. And again, the thing I can't stress enough is, is that this this reliance upon these so-called, you know, masters of the universe that they're going to be able to, oh, they got all in control. They're going to fix it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to work really well. And we're seeing it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just look at it. We always knew this was coming. And the longer they put it off, the worse it was going to be. Right. And now here we are in 2022. And like you said, what's going to stop it? So now they're going to pivot. Uh, well, maybe we'll, I guess they have to do the 50 basis points increase this week. because because it's already baked in the cake and yeah. it doesn't do them any good not to. Right. But uh, come next month and the month after, we'll see how anxious they are to raise rates. Yeah. Powell has said in candid moments over the last a uh, year, year and a half, that the primary reason they would raise Fed funds is just they have a tool to be able to cut them again yeah. sometime in the future. Because if you're at zero and they can't go negative, so they're just trying to build up that little cushion. But the, everything that has come together and that that little Japanese segment, uh, that's pretty important as well. And, I, you know, here's one more thing, Kerry, that got lost last week that just left me shaking my head. You know, they, remember when Le, they ran out Lagarde for the ECB last week? Yeah. And she was going to talk about all this hawkish stuff and all this jazz. And, wow, let's see what the ECB is going to do now to match the Fed. Then she said, but, you know, we got to worry about fragmentation was her word of the EU, meaning what's she talking about? She's talking about the pigs. Remember the pigs? Yeah. Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain. If, them. if the EU or the ECB, I should say, if the European Central Bank doesn't actively totally buy their debt, if they're not constantly on the bid for Italy and Greece and Spain and Portugal, then those bond markets just implode. There's no bid. Yeah, no one wants it, especially so, Italy's debt and Portugal and Spain. And Gary, how do we how do we get to this point? That's not the job of a central bank. Mm, They're not uh, supposed to be the buyer of last resort of government bonds. But now they are 100 percent trapped, as is the Fed. The Fed just doesn't admit it yet. But if the Fed doesn't restart QE, how high are U.S. Treasuries going to go? Can you imagine 10 year note at six or seven percent in a complete bond market meltdown? Okay. Where would mortgage rates be? Where'd credit? I mean, we would add the U.S. economy would grind to a complete halt. They're the buyer of last resort. They will turn those spigots on again. Absolutely. 100 percent guaranteed. The only thing you don't know is, I mean, by that point, it'll be too late. Oh, well, then we'll get it done. Then we're going to get build back better. Part oh, two, right? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. what we're going to get, because they'll be uh, passing the stimulus again. Yeah. It, and well, and, and in the end, it's modern monetary theory and it's yield curve control and it's all phony baloney and they're, but they're not going to be able to, you know, the way <laughs> I'm just thinking about, I just got back from the grocery store like an hour ago and I ended up on the cereal aisle. I had noticed on the cereal aisle about a month ago that what used to be a 16 ounce box of cereal is now 13 ounces. Yeah. Cause I saw it as like, wow, that's only three fifty nine. That's, and then I re oh, okay. That's 10, 20% smaller. Is there a hedonic adjustment in the current CPI to a, account for shrinkflation? Yeah. Probably yeah. not. Well, I mean, where, where if, if consumer products stayed the same like that, same size, you know, if you're Big Mac that used to be this big around and now is this big around, <laughs> is there a hedonic adjustment for that? Oh, man, dude, that, this is just, this is a time that you really got, people really have to be paying attention and be smart and be part of your community, know your neighbors. Um, 
plant your garden, really, plant yeah. your gardens now. Plant your garden. I don't know how to do it, but I'm thinking I got a little strip of land back there. It gets some sun. It gets warm. right. Let's uh, let's grow some herbs and you know some some tomatoes and cucumbers right. and whatever. Man, I'll have to learn, I guess. Right. All these cats, like my buddy Chris Martinson or Mike Krieger or all these people I know that moved to the country, you know, in a small town. And now they raise chickens and their own food. They got their well and stuff like that. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. The the math is the math. The math is the math. And uh, we've reached the point of uh, redeemability. There's no redemption here. It just has to unwind and it ain't going to be pretty. Look, even Jamie Dimon a couple weeks ago warned us, right? Yep. Satan himself. When Satan himself is telling you that there's an economic hurricane coming, you might as well take his word for it. Hey, when Satan himself tells you that there's a fire, man, you better (laughs) go put on the asbestos undies. You better believe it's going to start getting hot in here. Yeah. (laughs) Well, uh, at least we got our sense of humor. (laughs) I decided. And I got beer in the fridge. So, you know, for at least a few hours later today, I'll forget about all this stuff. Yeah, exactly. And stock up on your emergency preparedness food, your uh, gold and silver, definitely, because uh, it's going to get bad. It's yeah. already bad. But and, and Carrie, the same thing goes for gold and silver. I mean, we've only we've talked about this for decades. It's like baby formula, right? Uh, cash at your bank if there's a run on your bank. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm walking in that trip to the grocery store day. All of a sudden I look in the, the, the little peanut butter area, mm-hmm. you know, with the Jif and the Skippy and the, the whatever brand. There's like a just a random little jugs of it. I was like, what is going, how do we get peanut butter shortage all of a sudden? Anyway, the moral of the story is you assume it's always going to be there and that's fine. You know, and okay, I'll get my peanut butter tomorrow. Is it how people think it's when they're all of a sudden it's not there. There may freaks out. Everybody's comfortable with the pricing scheme of gold and silver and their unallocated accounts, their ETFs and all this other fake garbage that is not actual physical metal. And, oh, it's fine. I can always get it. I can always go, you know, what? No, you know what? Maybe today you can, but maybe not tomorrow. You know, if you think you need gold and silver as protection for this, and you do, you'd better get your hands on the real deal mm. now. Now, I don't sell bullion. I'm not like trying to make a buck by, you know, pumping people into, you know, overpriced coins or something. It's the, your only protection. And if you think you can get it later, good luck and fondue. I, it just is, you better get it now because things are moving fast. And it's and uh, you don't want to be left there holding the bag in a, a bag of fiat, wishing you'd move sooner. Hey, the everything bubble has turned into the everything shortage. Right. 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 And everything collapse. Yeah. It's, they moved all the demand up front. You know that's what you do mm-hmm. when you manipulate stuff. Is you take demand that would have happened in the future and production, and you move it up to the current time. And then when you get out there, then nobody can believe there's a shortage. Right, right. Like apartments in New York City. Yeah. Yes, yeah, right. Control. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same All thing. Right. And here we are. All right. Well, hey, there's hope. Just go over to tfmetalsreport.com. Make sure you sign up, become a subscriber. If you had been a subscriber all these years, you might have been preparing for long before the storm ever hit. But right now, you would be prepared for certain. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and Carrie, I mentioned earlier about community and knowing your neighbors. And kind of working together, you know, bringing your your circle in. That's it's not like just a newsletter that you get mailed to you. I mean, I do analysis and stuff. Great. But the community part of people, you know, hey, did you see this? Hey, did you think about that? I, that's, I'm not charging enough for that. <laughs> that's invaluable. It, it's really, especially in this time. So, yeah, please check us out. Yeah, definitely check it out. Because, look, the the reaction of the powers that be is going to be to further silence people like you and I, Craig, yeah. calling this for years. I see them already messing with the algorithms all over the place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so direct to the website is the way to go, whether it's financialsurvivalnetwork.com or tfmetalsreport.com. You're going to have to go direct to the source. You're not going to really be able to use search engines to find it for much longer because when this hits the fan, what do they try to do? Not fix what's actually going on. They try to shut up the people, you know, yeah. basically gag the people who've been warning about it all this time because they don't want to look bad. Oh, no one could have ever seen this coming, Craig, right? Who right. would have thought? Right. Who could have believed? Yeah, well, right. look at our sites. Go back over the past 10 years. You've been at it longer than me. I've been at it 
11 years, June 7th was my becoming a full-time podcaster, professional podcaster. And it's all throughout my archives, but you can't find my archives except on the site. Yeah, right. Something you have to really consider is changing your viewing habits to actually go directly to sites. Don't trust aggregators to give you the information. So important. Hey, well, in any event, tfmetalsreport.com, go there, sign up. Hey, for, uh, for a little less than a Starbucks every day, you can get this information, join the community, and they're not going to bother you about the bathroom either because you'll be in your own home. <laughs> you know, now they're like starting to restrict the bathroom policy there. <laughs> and uh, financialsurvivalnetwork.com and sign up for your free newsletter. If you got a question, comment for Craig, put it up on the YouTube channel or shoot me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. Craig, always a pleasure. Thanks so much. Hang in there, my friend. We'll see what it looks like the next time we talk. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.